Stealth is one of gaming's most significant mechanics. Outside of the storytelling, overall control, and presentation, the stealth in any particular action game is easily one of the most decisive aspects of whether or not the experience will feel complete and worth your time. It's true that not all games in the action genre necessarily need stealth, but those that do include it certainly run the risk of feeling incomplete if they phone it in and don't do it right. Perhaps 20 years ago, a stealth game with very few indicators of your status and rudimentary systems would have been passable. Footsteps generally didn't factor in. Shadows weren't much of a variable. Enemy fields of vision were pretty short and easy to manipulate. And enemies generally had two static states, alerted and not. Today, the genre is very different. Walking on different surfaces can attract attention depending on what those surfaces are and the distance between you and the enemies. Shadows and camouflage can greatly impact the scenario, and enemy combatants' fields of vision are often more generous to them, giving them the ability to see you from further away. On top of that, the alertness of enemies is a more dynamic spectrum, where they can be anything from completely unaware of your presence, inquisitively inspecting something they think they saw but aren't totally sure what it is, fully alert of your presence and currently engaging with you, to aware that you're around but having lost sight of you, are now searching around until they ultimately give up and lay off. Quite a difference from the days of Metal Gear on the NES. It's true that many of these improvements were pioneered during the early 2000s, during what many would consider to be the glory days of stealth games, with titles like Splinter Cell, Hitman, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 coming out back to back. However, while the basic tenets those games popularized are still largely intact today, the systems in place that dictate how they work have indeed gotten more complex and sensitive over the years. While most gamers would largely agree on what qualifies as a stealth game, especially when we talk about bigger titles, when you get into the nitty-gritty of the elements that make them up, it can get a little more dicey. For instance, most would agree that a major key requirement for a stealth game would be avoiding enemies until you can strike at the correct, most opportune time. But by that logic, Pac-Man would qualify as a stealth game. Yet most would find the idea of Pac-Man being a stealth game laughable because of the associations of stealth and certain modern titles. But for the purposes of this conversation, we'll be looking at those core elements. despite that occasionally taking us outside of the realm of games that identify as stealth titles. Given this, the elements that make up a stealth experience, when broken down into their purest form, can be traced all the way back to the beginning of games themselves, like Combat, the infamous tank game for Atari 2600, as it pitted your tank against another computer-controlled tank as you try to outmaneuver each other and stay one step ahead of the other. Or the original Castle Wolfenstein, where shooting unaware enemies from behind or just avoiding them was the ideal path to advance most of the time. Both of these games worked in clever ways by giving the opponent a few fairly simple scripts to follow that alternate based on what you do with your character and give the illusion of a more dynamic experience. Given that you stand still, the enemy could continue with their default path, whether that be to come straight towards you like in combat, or walk a certain routine that ignores you until you interact with it, with either an attack or getting spotted like in Castle Wolfenstein or Metal Gear. Sometimes these scripts would alter, like they did in games like Pac-Man, Combat, or a litany of other arcade titles and adjust to your actions to make the experience of closing in on them or running away from them seem less predictable and occasionally help the player from getting trapped in an inescapable situation. Obviously, this didn't always go off without a hitch, but it did mitigate the problem of situations that feel like they preclude the player getting caught no matter what they do. These basic pillars of stealth and strategy remain in place even today, but of course, now have many more layers to them. One of the biggest elements to be brought into the stealth genre was illustrations of your status. Tenchu had the key meter that was a simple number going up and down. 
depending on your proximity to another person. Metal Gear Solid had the radar system and its trademark vision cones that have been replicated countless times by countless other games. Splinter Cell experimented with lots of different styles of meters that would illustrate the degree to which you were visibly hidden and or how much noise you were making at any given time. All of these worked well for their respective games and were basically windows into how the game was internally measuring your risk and your vicinity to getting caught. Watch the alarms. This is a bank robbery after all. Some games would use somewhat more shallow versions of these tools, like 2005's Stolen, but the intent was still the same, showing the player how close or far they were from being detected by illustrating the results of your effect on the game's different stealth metrics really brought the genre into a new, more visceral era. Another major layer that has helped shape the genre and style of stealth games is the auditory one. For well over 20 years now, shooting off a loud gun or stepping on the wrong type of surface in an enemy-occupied area can easily alert enemies, triggering a chain reaction of events that change the dynamics of the experience up to and including a fail state. This element itself has also gone under many layers of evolution, in an older game like Metal Gear Solid, shooting off a SOCOM shot in the wrong room will instantly trigger an alert state for the enemies, your radar will go offline, and suddenly all the enemies in the room will automatically know where Snake is located. While this was impressive for the time and gave players of the late 90s plenty to think about, this was actually a rather static event and simply depends on the room and whether or not you make a loud noise in them. If you fire off an unsuppressed shot in an area where this rule applies, you'll trigger the alert status regardless of how close or far you were to an enemy, or whether it was a bullet or a stinger missile. This wasn't depending on AI as much as it was just a simple scripted event that you would either trigger or avoid. To give the illusion of this mechanic being truly dynamic, it just wouldn't apply in other areas, usually outdoor ones, and also usually regardless of the enemy distance or the type of weapon being fired off. This was a fairly thin illusion of dynacism, though. Developers would soon add better depth to this in future games. In MGS 2 and 3, for instance, you could theoretically shoot a loud blast in an outside area where enemies are technically located and get detected. But if they're far enough away, you might get away with it making the proximity to an enemy combatant a factor in whether or not you trigger an alerted status, as simple as that is, does go a long way to making the scenarios of early 2000s stealth games feel much more active and realistic than the ones of just a couple years prior. At its core, it's just applying the same principle of the vision cone to sound in addition to sight, but the overall effect pays dividends for the end user. Now that we see more action games include stealth as an option and less stealth dedicated games, we have seen somewhat of a standardization of the different on-screen cues and other indicators of how hidden or discovered you are. Enemies either being totally alerted to your presence or totally unaware of you are mostly phased out now in favor of a more flexible system that includes a short window in between both states in which an enemy sees you but still isn't totally sure what to make of the situation and many degrees of this. While in this fleeting state, the player must quickly choose to either engage the enemy at the risk of alerting more of them or dash into cover in an attempt to avoid full-on detection. Most of the time, especially in games where stealth is not the primary focus of the experience, like Horizon Zero Dawn or the new Wolfenstein games, escaping the semi-alert state will trigger a short period of confusion by the enemy, where they may come straight to where they last saw you. If you are not there, they return to the default, unaware state. However, modern games where stealth plays a much bigger role in the experience, like Metal Gear Solid 5 or Deus Ex Mankind Divided, add many more layers to these moments with various gadgets and abilities that can hide the player more effectively 
or engage with the enemy in a way that avoids detection from others if done quickly enough, like MGS5's little bullet time window. All of these moments are, at their core, not too fundamentally different from the previously mentioned games from the 80s and 90s, as they all are largely just made up of if X happens, then Y happens moments from the game's programming perspective. Even in The Last of Us, a game that took the world by storm with its seamless integration of multiple mechanics, had a stealth-focused final battle with David, where stepping on shards of glass wasn't really different at all from stepping in a puddle in Metal Gear Solid, an effect that would bring the enemy to that spot but not necessarily trigger full detection. A brilliant mechanic that seems like an accident to be avoided to the untrained eye, but could also be used to your advantage in both games. The main difference between Castle Wolfenstein and Metal Gear Solid 5 is that there are just a lot more of these moments, adding more layers of possibilities and potential outcomes to any given situation. As stealth continues to evolve in video games, especially in the VR space, it's fascinating to ponder just how the addition of even more of these gameplay paths and options will continue to bring gamers ever closer to tricking their brains into thinking it's the real thing, and not just a bunch of triggers and code. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you'll be notified when new videos go up.